So this is something I've been wanting to make since I started this channel back in May. And that being commentary videos. So recently I started to make a few of these as gap videos while making other rolling line videos. Seeing as those videos have more effort to make compared to commentary videos where I'm just adding pictures over me talking about stuff so it's like less effort. Nonetheless, I welcome to you to my first installment of the commentary series, Cowell Rambles, where I'll be talking about railroad-related topics and opinions, and maybe branch into other subjects outside of trains. Nonetheless, let's jump into the first topic, shall we? For those who don't know, recently Union Pacific started unveiling a new paint scheme for their locomotives, and it was left with a... mixed reception. Some people were fine with it, others didn't like it, period, and I can understand why. As for me, I'm gonna be honest, I don't think the livery is that bad, it just needs some improvement, more particularly the nose logo. Union Pacific ended up placing a giant shield on the front of it rather than keep the wings on the front, which worked a lot better compared to the shield logo in my opinion. Modern Union Pacific locomotives often have the wing shield logo on the nose, which was a callback to the early diesel era when the streamlined diesels had the wings on the front. Union Pacific brought back the attrition back in the 1990s following the purchase of several SU-70Ms, with the addition of the American flag on the side as opposed to a text logo, which carried out onto modern UP engines until now. A good example on how the new scheme should look can be on UP's rebuilt SC-40s, seeing as they have the text logo on the side, yet the wings on the nose are still there. UP unintentionally did something like this on their mainline units back in 2019, that being SC-78's number 8327, which had the text on the side and the wings logo on the front, which in my opinion, that's how I feel a new livery should look like. The nose logo in my opinion could have worked if they had shrunk down the logo a bit, seeing as they did it before many of their older units, and even then it felt natural in stuff like SD40s, Dash 8s, SD90s, AC6000s, etc. It worked because the logo was small enough to make it not look like it was just like bulging out like an infection or something, or just trying to grab your attention saying, Hey, this is Union Pacific we're talking about! We are cool! The one other bit of the livery I do not like, really, is the flag on the side. I'm sorry, Union Pacific, but this shit just looks cheap on its own. Like, yeah, the flag might have cost a little more given the fact it was a printed on decal, but even then, it felt natural on locomotives. This just looks like a cop-out. If anything, this makes Canadian Nationals Every Child Matters units look like CP's ECM locomotives. And those are shit on their own. You could have just gotten rid of that and it would make the delivery a bit better. So yeah, in conclusion, this scheme, while I understand the mixed reception, it does need work. The flag on the side is fucking terrible. The shield logo can either be shrunk down or just go back to the wings. Other than that, the livery is... kinda meh. It does make you wonder though how Class 1 railroads are starting to slowly cheapen their liveries as a cost-cutting measure. CSX started adding the URL logo, Canadian National has an Aboriginal sticker, Canadian Pacific brought back the Beaver, and Norfolk Southern and BNSF still have their same livery to this day. How long until Class 1 railroads start paying their liveries with just a logo in one color and nothing else? Time will tell.